welcome to the ASUS AIoT podcast. Today we have a very close partner of ours with us as a guest, uh, Fabio Sosa, president of Magnica DHW. Fabio, very welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Sir. It's a pleasure to be here. Same for us. Um, so we'll start with a more personal question. Okay. And uh, so did you always know that you wanted to work in tech? Right. I think I did. Yes. So technology was always a big passion for me. So I was actually, I, I had the privilege, I think, to uh, be in a, in a generation that went, that had the first contact with uh, personal computers. So I actually learned from, you know, the very first uh, computers available in the market. So I know what it, what it was a world without computers, without internet. So Uh, having had this experience is something uh, absolutely incredible. And I was very good at maths in school, so I thought, well, engineering, that kind of thing. So, yeah, yeah I think I always wanted it. Yeah. So you, had a, you have a background in engineering. Right. Uh, you knew that you wanted to be in tech somehow. And, but how, how was your journey? How did you end up doing what you do? Yeah, so um, it was a long one. Um, But, but very, very interesting and, and, and full of, um, I think, moments that you cannot expect. Uh, and only looking back, you, you, you see how things connect and make yeah. sense. So I chose um, engineering. At the time, what was available was not electronics, um, so only electrical engineering. So that's what I did. Um, and I tried to specialize into electronics as I went along. Um, but to be honest, in the first maybe 60% of my course, I actually thought it wasn't for me. It was, I, didn't, I didn't really like it until I did one particular subject that was related to uh, digital uh, electronics uh, and, um, you know, uh, digital circuits and, and that kind of thing. And then I, I found my calling. Uh, that was the moment that I decided, no, no, this is, this is the right thing to do. And then I graduated and, and I, I found some opportunities to work on that. And then I discovered a particular technology that really uh, um, made me, um, you know, think this, this was the right path, which is uh, FPGAs. Uh, and then I decided to dedicate myself to FPGAs. And then uh, uh, that opened um, a lot of doors on, on the um, you know, professional side. Mm -hmm. So that's how it started. And you actually worked uh, for Altera for I did. quite a, some time, right? Yes, yes. That, that too was something quite unique for me. I, I had dedicated my, uh, the beginning of my career to learning and to understanding more about Altera FPJ. So that was the, the tool that I had, uh, uh, you know, uh, available to me. Uh, and it was something very, very new at the time in, uh, in Brazil. Uh, so I'm talking late 90s. Yeah. And um, so uh, it got to a point where I um, actually got, let's say, well known enough that the Altera distributor in Brazil invited me to become their FAE. Uh, so I moved to Sao Paulo and uh, started covering all the customers in Brazil. And that was uh, definitely a very good experience, um, networking as well, but from a technical standpoint. And with that, I had the opportunity to actually visit Altera in, uh, in the US. Uh, in, in one of the visits, I actually met with the development team from the UK that at the time was uh, hiring and, um, you know, the rest is history. So yeah. I actually got uh, hired by them and I worked for Altera for five years in the UK. Um, it was a long time ago, uh, almost 20 years ago, but it was very, very rewarding. Yeah. So you just mentioned Brazil here and mm -hmm. I need to stop because I don't, I think I didn't mention that. No, you, you are yes. from Brazil. <laughs> yes, right? I am. Yes. Yeah. But you've been around the globe. Uh, and so and now you work, um, uh, you'll tell the story later on uh, uh, right. with a company, a Japanese company. Right. Um, but uh, this, I like the story, how things, like you say, in hindsight, things connect. Right? Yes. Yes, absolutely. So uh, it, it is a sequence. Uh, Of, of events and, and um, what happened to me was uh, after five years working in the UK, mm -hmm. I uh, well it, it was a, a family decision and we decided to go back to Brazil mm -hmm. and I decided to uh, open a company which mm -hmm. was um, brave uh, mm -hmm. to say the least. Uh, yeah, the, the, they say that bravery and stupidity are, are very, <laughs> very, very close. So I, I don't know which one it was, but um, I, I, so I did, I went back to Brazil, opened my own company, a design services company, mm -hmm. DHW at the time called, 
Uh, and I actually really, at the time, I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life writing code for FPGAs and being happy mm -hmm. uh, seeing projects come you know, to fruition and mm -hmm. going into the market and all that kind of thing. Um, but that's not exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the company grew um, as the market uh, started demanding more than just the FPGA design. Yeah. We grew into you know, board level design and software and many other things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and and the at the time uh, I think I would say uh, 2009 yeah we uh, we got approached by Altera because mm. they needed a partner in Brazil to develop the business yes and uh, basically I told them you know we don't really know how to sell anything we just just build things but then uh, they they insisted and they said no 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 we can we can help you uh, understand how the selling process works but we need your expertise so. Um, we became the rep for Altair in yeah. 2009. Uh, and uh, three years later, 2012, we got acquired by um, a distributor, a global distributor that has a very, at the time, had a very um, um, close relationship with Altair mm -hmm. um, and was actually the exclusive distributor of Altair in mm -hmm. Japan uh, called Magnica. Mm -hmm. um, I, to be honest, I had never heard of them at the time when they contacted me. But they uh, were very interested in opening a, an operation in South America, which was the last, um, I think, part of the world that needed mm -hmm. coverage. Uh, so they did that by acquiring DHW. And in 2012, we, we became Magnica DHW. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, what I always find interesting is mm -hmm. that um, it's, it's a common trait that I find in engineers, yeah. very capable ones. Right. Yeah, that they are quite humble. And you know, and they they but they have such so much knowledge. So mm. it's it's that it's controversial, but in a, in a way, for me, I find it endearing because you know they're so knowledgeable, but they're also so humble. You know, oh no, I I don't understand anything about the sales process. You know, mm. I don't know how to market this, but I they they do have a lot of knowledge. So I always found this very interesting. Thank you. So I, I, to be honest, I was uh, I was being very very honest with them at the time mm. because uh, I. I I, th I think one of the things that I always grew up thinking was uh, I can do anything but sales. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to convince anyone yeah. to buy anything because that's not what I do. Uh, and, and then it took me some time to realize that it's not about convincing mm. anyone of anything. It's about believing in what you have and how much impact mm -hmm. uh, what you have to offer mm -hmm. uh, can can have on, on uh, you know, people, society, market or yeah. whatever industry. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so it, it was a, a transforming mm -hmm. journey. Definitely, I'm, I'm a different person now. Right. But, uh, yeah. I I actually owe uh, well many people uh, uh, you know that, that participated in my life, but uh, definitely that period with Altera and then the the guidance that they get, gave me afterwards uh, during the rep uh, mm -hmm. process. Yeah. That's great because you know when uh, in tech. Uh, and me being one of the, these people that are more on the sales side, mm -hmm. right? So I don't have a technical background, but I learned, I, I'm, I'm sort of doing the opposite of you, right? Yes. I'm learning the technical right. side. Right. Uh, yes. uh, but I always have this feeling that I think technical people have such an advantage because you understand the technology in depth and then you you, you can develop, not, all, not everybody does, but mm -hmm. you can develop these uh, sales skills that, uh, you know, and explain this, uh, tell the story of the technology. So uh, I I think it's a well-rounded journey. <laughs> yes, it is, and, and um, it, for me, I think engineering was was more like um, a way to shape your brain and shape mm -hmm. your, your your way of thinking. It, right. it, it gives you a set of tools mm -hmm. uh, that you can apply to many things. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and at my time, maybe things are different now. And, yeah. But when, when I did university, there was this. Um, I think. Um, unspoken rule that it was very very difficult to finish the course oh. uh, so it was a big challenge and mm -hmm. it was you know the te the teachers were you know terrible and you know that kind of thing yeah. so it, it was a, a kind of a, a test of uh, resilience and uh, right. so once you graduated you kind of thought I can do anything that's, that's you good know? Though, so right? this is a very empowering uh, thing to, to give it and, and I actually owe my university more for that mm -hmm. than for the actual knowledge that I got 
over the you know the, the semester. So. Yeah, and I think maybe that's uh, wh that's where the courage came from. <laughs> maybe or, or the stupidity. <laughs> oh, <it's right>. so, <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk a little bit about. Um, uh, the partnership. Okay. We actually know each other for, um, I think, a few years ago yes. now, yes. five years at least. Yeah. And we've been collaborating in different projects and in different ways as right. well. Yeah. So um, the partner program that ASUS AIoT uh, runs is all about uh, bringing together different partners from the ecosystem, different mm -hmm. kinds of partners, and trying to uh, put a solution to it, co create a solution and uh, take it to market uh, together. And uh, do you want to mention a few, a couple of things that we've been doing together? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We, we've done it, uh, well, we've been doing lots of uh, very interesting things uh, together. We're working on, uh, you know, a smart cities uh, project that we have in, in Brazil. Um, we have this, this fantastic project that we are developing with, uh, you know, to impact the agriculture in Brazil as well, as, as you know with uh, brainwaves and uh, we actually have a, one of our technologies that we, we take in our portfolio is a, a brain tech um, software that is able to um, uh, interpret mm -hmm. brainwaves from specialists and improve the quality of uh, AI mm -hmm. and we're using that to identify diseases in plants and make this knowledge that comes normally from very highly specialized uh, uh, people yeah. uh, available and, and you know, to everyone in mm -hmm. in, uh, in Brazil. So that is definitely a, a, a very high impact project that I I really love. But uh, and and re in the retail, the mm -hmm. retail side that um, for me it was something very new as mm -hmm. our first uh, involvement with uh, retail. But yeah. uh, under your uh, guidance and and you know the fact that we collaborated so well. Mm -hmm. uh, things are going really, really nicely there. Yeah. Yes. So uh, you, the way that we collaborate with you, I find uh, among our partners is, uh, you know, it's very varied because sometimes there's certain partners that have, a, because of the product, nature of the product and their solution, we, we find a certain model and we stick to it and we do several uh, solutions with them, like in the same model. But I think with Magnica DHW, we did uh, quite a bit of different things, right? right? That's true. And I want That's to highlight true. this because I think uh, with you, we, we started with this project, particularly for retail. We we had the AI in-house at ASUS, right. but we really needed someone to be able to read this AI yes. right? well, yeah, and put it into something <laughs> right. that is readable. So it was a software house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And it's not really what you do. No, uh, okay. no, no. But we were very, you know, very happy to engage. And, and we have this flexibility. We have, mm -hmm. we, we are able to adapt uh, yeah. based on, on the needs. And I thought the project itself Itself was so uh, exciting, so mm -hmm. interesting that um, I could allocate some of my technical team yeah. to help out with the actual development. Mm -hmm. But in the end, uh, we will market it together. Yeah. So even though we are a at heart a distributor, mm -hmm. we can also be when needed an integrator or an ISV or whatever uh, other function is, yeah. is might be needed for a particular project to be viable, to be to be realized. Yes, and I think this uh, actually proves the ability, the engineering ability that uh, Magnica has overall as a company, right? That there's uh, a lot of people who are engineers and have different capabilities. Mm -hmm. So with you, we've worked on a uh, software integration side, also as a system integrator when we go to deployment, but also as a distributor. Right, and, and, and that's an interesting thing to uh, to uh, acknowledge about Magnica. Magnica is a 51 year old company that, mm -hmm. you know, built itself from the ground from uh, the semiconductor distribution business. It's uh, actually the, the largest one in Japan, number mm -hmm. five in the world. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sizable company. It's a very, very uh, interesting company to work for. But um, uh, the, the interesting thing is that um, they, they got interested in, in DHW in Brazil, not because we, you know, knew anything about you know, semiconductors, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the commercialization side of it, right. the sales side of it, but because we had a very strong technical team. Right. And uh, so so the engineering and the technical capability is something that Magnica really thinks is uh, um, amazingly important because uh, that's how the impact is done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So my next question is, how do you differentiate yourself in the market? 
That's an interesting one because um, we come from, as I mentioned, from the semiconductor distribution background. So we and, and all our uh, original expertise comes from electronics, you know, board level design and that kind of thing. Um, that is focused directly towards the industry, uh, mm -hmm. the electronics industry. But uh, over the past maybe ten years, we have been investing heavily global, uh, globally um, on solutions and, and how to impact uh, other markets that are not necessarily directly related to semiconductors. Mm. So um, with that, I think there is a very interesting, um, let's say, overlap between the physical world and, and, the, and the basic electronics that, can, that is needed basically mm. for uh, all the data collection and, and uh, the communication side and mm. the processing side. Uh, with the intelligence and, and uh, how to impact particular markets. So I think as a solution provider, we have all the, uh, let's say, a, a, well, base, basic uh, blocks that are important for the whole journey of the uh, data and the information. But as a, a semiconductor distributor, we also have all the software and all the uh, solutions that can show something much bigger than the electronics uh, mm -hmm. themselves. So uh, we have uh, the best of both worlds, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's a very unique combination. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, my last question, okay. it's uh, again going back to a more personal approach, mm -hmm. uh, is about predicting the future All in right. a way. That's, um, that's easy, right, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so imagine we are 30 years from now, mm -hmm and uh, the world has changed significantly, many aspects of it has. Okay. Um, choose one aspect of, okay. of life that has changed okay. and tell us how do you imagine it has changed and what is the technology they're using? What's happening there? Well, that's a tricky one. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so my track record is uh, terrible. Uh, so I've been thinking about it and I, and I thought, well, if, if you go back like in 10 and 10 and 10 years, yeah. uh, if if you if you if, if I could go back and talk to myself there mm -hmm. and explain where I was going to be ten years later, yeah. I would have laughed because <laughs> uh, you know there's no way I could have predicted that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll I'll give it a try. So uh, yeah, so we we are doing amazing things together to mm -hmm. change uh, how things are done mm -hmm. through technology. So um, uh, I come from an agri agriculture country. Uh, Brazil is uh, it's very heavy on agriculture and there's so much to do in terms of uh, improving uh, you know productivity and quality and sustainability of all the processes uh, so I think technology can play an incredible uh, part in in this process uh, so we are already using uh, brain waves to uh, get a specialist knowledge to uh, democratize um, access uh, to expert uh, you know uh, uh, insights uh, so I, I believe that with the whole uh, robotics, um, very advanced communications um, uh, and, and, and coverage that um, you know five six G can can bring mm -hmm. and and beyond, um, and, and drones and, and autonomous uh, vehicles and all this all this process can not only increase uh, the yield the productivity of. Uh, of our uh, agriculture, but also um, maybe even democratize the production itself and make available uh, and, and, and maybe uh, even, I would say, uh, decentralize mm -hmm. uh, how production is, is made and mm -hmm. under more controlled environments, maybe we could even bring the production closer to uh, the uh, big centers right. and, and, and create this balance mm -hmm. between what is urban and what is uh, green mm -hmm. and uh, have a, a, a much better and more sustainable uh, future for all mm -hmm. of us. So that's uh, what I would like to see. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, good. Let's see then. Uh, let's sit down, you know, in when it happens. Right. Again, let's see how much <laughs> it was actually. Do another episode on yeah, this. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> Thank great. you so much. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you for, Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.